Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm going to make a quick video, as quick as possible, on how to create alpha channels inside of PaintShop Pro. The version that I'm using in particular is PaintShop Pro version 12. Uh, this is a pretty old version. I it's probably around 8 to 10 years old. But, uh, you know, if, it, if it's not broke, don't fix it. So I usually stick with what works. And this has worked well for me. So anyway. Here we have a typical tree. I, I try to pick one that's pretty complicated um, as far as the branches and so forth. And uh, it's got a lot of detail. It's not just a big bushy tree. Um, so anyway, it, it has this white background. And it, it can be green or, you know, whatever. It doesn't matter with this particular method. And there's several ways, several ways you can do this. Um, some people want you to use um, the background eraser tool and you know that kind of works but if you need to get inside these these little areas here <laughs> you'll be here for like 50 years trying to get those so here's a quicker way okay and if you don't have paint shop pro or version 12 even if you got photoshop you know, they all have their little ways that they do this. And um, the older versions of PaintShop Pro should do this as well. And the newer versions of PaintShop Pro should have this little tool here called the Magic Wand. It's on the left-hand side. And if you don't see it, you'll probably see this at first. It says Selection. So just click on that and go down. And it'll say Magic Wand. And just click on anywhere inside of here that's white and you'll notice that it highlights a lot of things here highlights the tree and just in case you're wondering at the top you need to have this set to color the match mode and tolerance usually I leave that at 20 um, depending on how much detail the photo has in it meaning if it's, it's, if it's a low resolution texture or photo um, you're going to probably have to mess with the tolerance a little bit, but this is a very high resolution photo. Um, so, therefore, it, 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 it's very distinct. So, you can see this. So, if you've got a ro low resolution texture, you might have to play around with that a little bit. It might not work at all. Um, but, for the most part, you know, it should. So, then you want to go to selections at the top. And click on that and click invert and now you see that this has been inverted and it doesn't really mean anything it just inverted the selection to the tree if you notice now just the tree is highlighted and here we go we go ahead and just click on the pan tool and then we'll right click on the image and select cut and now we've cut the tree from the original image and now we're going to downsize this and then we'll right click and click paste as new image and there you have it you have a <laughs> cut out tree just as simple as that and if you want to if you want to make the alpha channel for this you just go to adjust brightness and contrast and then click brightness and contrast again the settings should be as you see here the brightness all the way up and the contrast all the way down and then you click OK come over here to the right hand side and click on new raster layer just click OK and then come to the left and click on flood fill and then we're going to if you don't have it already just go up here and select black and then go ahead and paint that in, flood fill it. And this has covered up our texture, so we need to drag it down below. And there you have it. You have an alpha channel. Simple as that. Okay, another thing is if if you cut your tree out and then you put color behind it, usually you want to put like a green color behind your tree because usually trees are green. And in this case, this is kind of a um, a spring tree or something like that. 
and it would probably be better to use a brown but let's just say you wanted to use green and you got these weird edges and in this case you got this bluish looking edge well then you want to come over here to the flood fill and you want to go to color changer in this case I have a green selected up here at the top and then we'll go to this blue and once again you have a tolerance and the tolerance is set to zero so we'll try that at first and just kind of step back look at it okay so we want a little bit more tolerance so let's set the tolerance to let's say you can keep setting the tolerance and then you'll notice as I roll the tolerance up the color changes so let's try that again it's hard to uh, take a look at this and be zoomed in at the same time but you notice that we've already knocked out a lot of that bluish fringe around the edge and it's and you know just like anything else this is one of those things you have to sort of play with and you can see I had the tolerance so high so let's go ahead and turn that down and we're getting a little bit blue and there's other ways to do this as well but this is just a quick way to sort of knock that out and once you apply the alpha you'll be able to tell whether you like it or not you can you can make this brown whatever color you want but this is just a, another technique that you can use in order to uh, trim off some of this the whiteness around the edges of your trees because sometimes you cut them out as perfect as you can but they still have that white edge and uh, this would probably be pretty good now like most things whenever we create trees we give them a green background that way when the alpha is applied in game that any fringe that we have or you know for like better word fringe but any stray uh, let's just say bad alpha channel <laughs> will show up as green instead of white and there you have it in this case this tree was pretty pretty good but let's say that you created this particular tree you you actually went in and reworked the tree a little bit you put it in the game you didn't like it but you've already put this green background to it and you've lost the original and now you've got to start from scratch and you go all these hours of work and what you'll do is inside of DXT BMP you can actually apply the alpha to the image because if we was to take this image right now and send it to our editor and then we sit we select green as you can see up here at the top the green is so similar you'd have to play with the tolerance level so much that it would just be frankly too aggravating to even mess with I mean you can see that it's it's just all kinds of bad let's go ahead and do the invert yeah you can see there's still some green that didn't get surrounded so going back to what I said earlier if we go to alpha apply alpha to the image now when we scroll down we have two different colors we have this gray background and these obviously opposite color green and when we send that to the editor it's a lot easier to work with it's not ideal but most of the time it is pretty darn close and we'll select invert and as you can see already all that green has been highlighted and we just cut it like we did before and I do that the cutting just so I can start fresh and there you have it you got your tree already cut out and this works pretty much for anything I've not had too much I think like I said this is not ideal but if this is a last resort and you don't mind to lose a little bit I mean just a little bit 
if that. I don't even know if I'm losing that much. I don't even think I'm losing anything. So, but there is that chance. But uh, I think this is pretty good. And now you can come back in and say that you wanted to create two of these. And I'm just doing this for show. <laughs> this is not even something I would do realistically. But let's just say you wanted, you know, that. And you just come in, select another raster layer, put it down here at the bottom, flood fill, put your green in, and start back over. And there you have it. I hope this helps. This is just one of several ways to create alpha channels and to edit tree textures and just about any other texture that uh, uses a transparent background. Thank you.